Can you hear me good? Because most of the times when people see something happen like this, the person that do it, they'll never get to tell their side of the story. So did, did you shoot your, your girlfriend and burn her house down? Yeah, I did. You did? Yeah. Why? So in the beginning, everything was good. Like, like our life was good. But the whole reason they kind of switched it up was like a couple, like a week ago, when uh, her parents, like one of her parents tried to get involved in our relationship and tried to turn her away from me or like ask about me and how I provide for her when I was providing very well. And um, it just made her like, like start to act different. I had been there with her for almost, almost what, 15 months, 15, 16 months. And they had never like came to check on her. I only seen them come to check on her like twice out of like almost what a year and year and a half. And I had been there for her emotionally, physically, and spiritually. But it was like when she when she tried to move on to the next chapter in her life, when her mom asked like how would he provide now that you' about to get a good job, how would he provide? I was getting ready to launch a business. I, I didn't just up and just wake up and do this. I didn't up and just wake up and do this. Had y'all had problems before? We had no problems at all. This was a buildup of, of just us taking a whole week. We had been in the house together for almost a year trying to get our business plans together. We had then figured out a, 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 a workout plan, a, a, a dieting plan, a, a, a financing plan. We, we had everything laid out. So I, I, I even helped her get her business launched. And sat there with her while she was trying to get her business her business put together when she had to actually run a church, go to college, take care of herself from when she was sick, and also make sure that her parents was good. So at that time I was helping her hold all the weight. So at what point did you have a breaking point that led you to feeling when you say you did part children? What was the moment that led to that? I had the breaking point when when her mom kept calling and she was crying like, so what is he gonna do? Like, I'm sorry, like you messing with her head now. I'm in here trying to build a foundation with her and y'all over here this side. So when she was getting ready to start her new job, it was like her attitude started to switch cause she listening to them, but they don't know she was crying and on the floor and everything before they, she even talked to them. So now I'm trying to build a foundation over here with her Y'all trying to come over here and, and, and build, but y'all never coming over. Y'all never actually putting in, and she's never telling y'all what I'm actually doing for her, so it makes it seem like I'm not providing at all. Because her attitude started to come out because of so much was going on. Her attitude started to lash out, but then also had things I was dealing with at the time, too. It's not just one thing you're dealing with when you, when you just snap. It's not that. It's other things in life I was dealing with. I was wearing a sex charge that I had, I had no involvement with, but, I, but my family told me to wear it just because I pleaded guilty to come home. But they didn't want me to clear my name or, or, or the faithful person so I could clear my name. They wanted me to wear it. So I was also dealing with that, and I had just found out that I was clear. I had just took a polygraph and I was clear. So I was on probation for about four years, and... Out of the four years I was on probation, probation never came in the house. But for some reason, they reset my probation after I took the polygraph, after knowing that I didn't do the sex uh, crime. They reset it like I just came home after four, four years. So now they put me back on the high. I was on the low. I, I was getting ready to get off of probation. I was good. But that Friday she called and was like, hey, I need to come to the house. And I need to, I need to see where you at. I need to see what the room looked like. I said, look. You ain't been in my house in four years. Nobody's been in my house out of like six probation officers in, in like four years. Why are you putting pressure on me now and it's like one o'clock? You didn't tell me you was coming or anything. So telling me it's protocol, I have to do my job. This is what I'm supposed to do. I said, look, man, I already got enough stress going on right now. Me and, me and, me and, me and Shorty over here trying to keep things level. I finally talked with her. She was like, she's ready to go back to work. But honestly, she didn't want to go to work because she didn't want to leave me. But I said, go ahead and go to work. But her parent, her, her mom on this end, was putting pressure on her and making her cry and break down. So then tell me what happened. You had a gun. Where did you shoot her? 
I shot her in the head. And then you said. But I didn't just do that. She told me, she told me I pulled a dog inside of the room. I pulled a dog inside of the room. And I, and I, and I, had, I had the snap already. I was saying red. So when I pulled a dog in the room, I was about to set the dog on fire. And she told me, she said, no, don't do nothing to the dog. You can take me and do whatever you want to do to me instead and let him live. So I did that. I did exactly that because she started making a lot of noise. I did exactly that. Do you have remorse for killing your girlfriend? I mean, when you snap, you don't think about remorse. You just snap. So, I mean, do you have remorse if you ever tell a lie? Do you have remorse if you ever look somebody in the face and told a bold lie? Or you had a question, but you knew the answer, but you just want to see what somebody's going to tell you? Do you have remorse when you feel, when you look in the mirror and, and, and you know this is not the right way to, 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 to go out, but you still go out like that? Like, like how many times in your life do you feel like you, should, you have remorse? So, after you shoot her in the head, you then set the house on fire. And the reason why, the reason why it made me set the house on fire was because even watching the cameras, like I told you, when her mom tried to get involved, when you try to get involved in somebody's relationship or you speak on the person that they with, I watch you on camera come check on her. You didn't even come and knock on the door. You just called her phone, but you didn't come in. She was dead since Tuesday. You came to the house on Wednesday. You, I was texting you on her phone. You knew something all right, but you still had a key and you still didn't come in and check on her. So you killed her Tuesday, set her house on fire on Thursday? Exactly. But they came on Wednesday, and, and she came on Wednesday, never came inside the house. She just parked in front of the house. So that's what made me fight. That's what made me fiery mad. Like, yo, y'all, like, this is what escalates when you, when you jump in front of somebody's relationship, and you act like you want to be there, but you came all the way to the house from Suffolk, Chesapeake, borderline. You drove all the way from there, and you just parked in front of the house, and you just drove off. If you had opened up the door, you would have realized that the house wouldn't be on fire. He was already dead. When did you kill Mr. Baxter? He was dead on Wednesday. You killed Mr. Baxter on Wednesday? Yeah, he was on he was dead on Wednesday. He he basically raised me. He basically like raised me. Like I was raised him for like fifteen years, but at the same time when I needed him the most, he won't dead. So at the same time, when I needed this and that, just something to get on my feet, he tell me he ain't had nothing. But when I but when I killed him, I found like twenty thousand dollars. So this whole time, if you had gave me a thousand, I would have been good just to make it back. Did you take the 20 grand? Yes, I took. Anybody would take the twenty grand. If you hit the lotto, you gonna take the twenty grand, right? Mm -hmm. I'm just I'm just asking. I'm, I mean, you ask a question, I'm gonna ask questions too. Anybody can take twenty grand if they see it and ain't no ain't nobody gonna stop it. Say that again. It was just so much hate I had for him because when I was growing up, he was dead, but then he just stepped out of my life. So when I finally tried to like make that bond with him, he act like he wanted to help. He was there, but then he wasn't there like I needed him. And even though I tell you in, in distress what I need, you tell me you don't have it, and I end up killing you, and now I find out you had everything I needed. I didn't need 20 grand. I probably needed like a thousand just to get myself situated. But when I kill you, when I find you got 20 grand, you've been lying to me this whole time. Like, don't nobody like to be lied to, so yes, I snap. Yes, I snap. And when I, brought my, when I brought my cousin there with me, and I did it, it was like, okay. It was like, okay, like, I've I been ready. Like, you had everything I needed. Yeah. 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 
So at the same time, he had seen both bodies. My cousin had seen both bodies, but he laughed at him. He made it seem like it was a joke. To me, it was something like, okay, I didn't want to do it, but I did it because I was snapping. So in, in the midst of everything, I was put to take care of some, some things with him for some people that wanted to kill him. So I, I already didn't snap. So I'm like, I'm ready to put in some work. I'm ready to go take care of some people that are trying to take care of you before I, I, I get killed. So in the midst of doing that, he's snapping on everybody that's around us. I'm, I'm, I'm in here trying to help save you because I already didn't snap. My life gone. You laughing and joking and talking stuff and like like yelling and everything and, and, and you out of control drinking whatever. So I tell you to calm down because I already got two I already killed two people. So I'm already uh, I'm already seeing red. You still talking to me irrationally whatever it is. I said let me find people who wanted to kill you. For some reason you can't find them but they can find you. So if they find you and I'm with you they gonna kill me too right? So I said eventually. You gonna have to shut up talking like that. You talking crazy. So, and nothing went down. He just started making the scene. I told him to calm down. And still started talking reckless at the mouth. I told him to calm down. And then he tried to put his hands on. on, on, on he just tried to charge and put his hands on, on on his girlfriend. So at the same time, I was like, look, I had to break that up. I'm like, I'm over here to kill somebody for you that want to kill you. But you in here trying to fight your girlfriend and you worry about about stuff that don't even matter to me. I just killed two people. And it should have been on Thursday. Where was it? At, at, at where he was standing. Yeah. You got fed up with that. I got fed up with him because he kept talking like, like you not about this, you not gonna do nothing. Like, bro, I just killed two people. You don't think I'm I'm ready to shoot again? So he just kept going off and, and started getting loud and raging. So I went right in the kitchen and, and shot him right in the head. He didn't drop. He just he just kept moving in circles. Then I shot him in the back to make sure he hit the ground. I don't feel no remorse about none of this at all. When you snap, you don't think about remorse. That's not something that comes to your mind when you snap it. It's like if you piss off, if, if your man cheated on you and you knew something and, you, and he ain't say nothing and you find out what you gonna do, you gonna talk nice, you gonna think about it, no, you gonna snap. Well, when I came in with my cousin, you know, he, he trying to greet me coming in. It's late at night. I walk in. He like, hey. He like, hey, what's up? And then he seen my cousin all black. He like, oh, what, 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 what the world going? And then as soon as he finished his sentence, I had to shot him in the head. He was gone. He was still sleeping with, you know what I mean, where he was laying at. I made sure I used the same gun. See, I ain't got to worry about finding no other guns or who did it. Yes, I wanted to be known. Yes, I did it. I was definitely looking for more people. But I was choosing my people wisely. I wasn't choosing these regular people. Like when the U.S. Marshals came to get me, it was like 40 of them out there. They had an army truck out there. So if it weren't for the two kids that was next to me in the Airbnb and they family and, and the girl that I had hostage with me, if it weren't for them, I would have I went out shooting. But because of the two little boys I seen playing with the ball and playing soccer, I said, you know what, I got kids. So why would I let them shoot up this, this house and they don't know where I'm at and, and they catch a bullet? Yeah, I had a girl hostage with me. That was his girlfriend. That was that was a um, McLean girlfriend. I had her hostage with me the whole time. Why? Because I told her if she leave and, and go talk, I was gonna kill her. Yeah. I took her with me everywhere. I told her, I gave her something and I said, look, you're going to play like you're with me. I took her shopping. I took her out to eat. I, I took her everywhere. And even when her family was calling, I told her, you say anything other than that, I will kill you. So, uh, hold on. So where in Kansas were you hiding out at? Were you at, at, at a relative? Or? 
I wow. wasn't hiding out nowhere in, in Hampton. I was in the Airbnb chilling. I had the, the upstairs, downstairs, kitchen, flat screen TVs. I had weed. I was good. I wasn't stressing about nothing. I, I can't hear you. It was in Hampton. Yeah. I had already planned on it because with 20 grand, I was trying to get a house. I was trying to get a house for like a month. So, I mean, I was definitely watching y'all broadcast. I did some good broadcast. But um, at the same time, I was sitting there watching y'all the whole time. I had a roll past all the houses where I did this shit at like, the, like back to back. Like I had a roll pad like twice. You know what I'm saying? I had even went in one of the houses the second time. My parents? Yeah, so your, your parents, Bill, Bill, Nah, June Bill got killed by my dad. Okay, so that was your dad? That was my dad. That was when I was locked up when I was doing my six year bid. He killed his wife. Okay. So um I saw that and I didn't know if there was a connection there, but that was your dad. That's my blood dad, yeah. Um He did it twice. He tried to he tried to kill my mom when I was almost what six months old. I was less than a year old, and she survived it. She she survived all the gunshots. He tried to empty the clip in front of her, or however however the story went. But she survived it, and he went away from my life for fifteen years. He came home when I was like fifteen. So. I mean, I made sure it's known that I did. I did it because as a man, I will take up for my my wrongdoings. But in, in all of this, I will tell people, you got to check up on your loved ones because at every time, nobody was checking up on none of these people. That don't make you want to kill more. That don't, okay, so you don't think about killing more behind that. See, this is two separate questions. You said, you, you said, so that didn't make me think to do that. None of this had nothing to do with that. I snapped on my cousin for a simple reason. I snapped on my dad for a reason. And I snapped on my girlfriend for a different reason. None of this had nothing to do with what they liked and what they were dealing with. But I can honestly tell you, when people say they checking on you, they not really checking on you. You're not okay. And if you still walk around like you're okay and something like this happens, nobody knows. Yep. Yes. Yes, because somebody checked on their loved ones, but they didn't know they was dead on Tuesday. They didn't know they was in there dead since Tuesday, but they left. And they didn't know since till when. When the house set on fire? Thursday? I went in to get everything. I went in to get everything. I had like 20 guns. I had like 20 guns, man. I was definitely ready to, you know what I mean, go on a nice little run. No, but I was getting ready to pop back out in the, in the, in the daylight and I definitely was about to do something. If they hadn't picked me up, what, last night? I definitely would have got out and, and, and let out some more steam because at the end of the day, nobody hears you when you're talking regularly. You got to do something like this, and now everybody in your face trying to ask you questions. So it's like, okay.
And now everybody got something to say, but when you telling them what's really wrong, which you ain't got, ain't nobody got nothing to say. I'm glad to take whatever it is, because I done live my life here. This is it's over with now. It's over with now, so when you talking to me now, I'm speaking to you from this straight me, here right now in this world, the next thing I'm gone. I done, I done live my life, I, done, I, I, I was going to do it differently, but it went out like that, so it's over with. No problem. No problem. I think there's um, another group coming out for another enemy. Oh, that's cool. That's cool. I'm gonna make sure. I'm gonna make sure. Can y'all give me some water, please? Hey, hey, are these your guys' microphones? Yeah. So I'm, I'm gonna bring them back down to you. Okay. All right, look, man. I gotta get your microphone from me here. I guess the other group's gonna. Trying to be off in your face, but uh, ain't no way I can get no water. Well, <coughs> yeah, we got. I mean, if we can get. get hey, do you want me to break? You know what? Hey, if you if you go to the cell, get a cup. I don't think that water fountain works. Do you want me to bring it down? Uh, use the T-shirt. Huh? Oh, it does work now. All right. All right. Here, Hughes. Hey, Hughes, can you take these down and grab down the microphones from another crew? Where you got, is it? You got the young legs. King Graham's office. Yeah. Okay, put these up. Me. Switch up. He's a, he's right back. 